and uh, welcome to another SolidWorks lesson. What we're going to do today, given that it's our national holiday here in Ireland tomorrow, we're going to take the eminent example that represents our day, which is the shamrock, okay? Albeit St. Patrick would be a more eminent figure for St. Patrick's Day, but shamrock is very typical. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of fun with SolidWorks. We're going to model up a little 3D shamrock, a very simple exercise, but what we're going to be focusing on here is using um, different tools, for example, the uh, spline tool in our sketch, and we will uh, use that to uh, help us create the shamrock. We'll also be adding in um, an image to, to uh, trace and so on. So this is a very useful exercise moving forward in terms of if you're bringing images into SolidWorks, and looking to kind of, I suppose, trace them to create the geometry that you're looking for. So what we'll do here now is we are in SolidWorks and we're going to go up to our tab at the top here and we're going to open our part, okay? So we click OK and that'll bring us to our work space. And as you can see, same as the last day, we get a blank screen here, our blank work area. We have our design tree on the left hand side, okay, with our planes, our front, which are elevation, top plane, which is plan, and right plane, which is the end view. And then up here we have our features, command bar, sketch command bar, our evaluate, and our other bits and pieces there as well. So, first things first, we're going to select front plane, and then I'm going to use that shortcut tool, control 8, to look straight at the front plane. Now, we're going to do a sketch naturally enough but what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the picture of a shamrock here in a moment but in order to bring in a picture to into the sketch plane we must put a line in there first so what i'm going to do i've selected front plane click on sketch and go to line click on the line tool and before you draw the line go down to the design tree here on the left and uh, we want to click for construction now once we have that then we can go move over to our point of origin with our pencil hover over the zero zero point and click and drag a line of any length and then press escape so i have a construction line there and you'll know it's a construction line because it is a broken line okay with a long dash and a short dash now once i have that i can then go to um, my tools tab click on that go down to sketch tools click on that move across to the down options there and go all the way down to sketch picture you'll see that at the bottom now that's going to ask me to look for a picture and you see here I have a shamrock so I'm going to open that now the shamrock comes in like so and the purpose of the construction line is it gives a line for the picture to line up on now we can change the size of that picture up or down on the left hand side we can change the width and the height of the picture so if i wanted to change the height for example and just to note that the scale tool is enabled on and the lock aspect ratio is enabled on so that if i change the height the width would change respectively however if i wanted that to be different i would check off both of those tools on the side and then i could change the shape of the image uh, to whatever i want however for us here at the moment we just want to keep the scale of the picture, but I can, for example, if I change the width here to say 600, you'll notice that the height has also changed as well. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, go to the little green tick here and check that. Lovely. Now what I can do is we're still in the open sketch here. We're going to go up to this tool here called the spline tool. Okay which is this kind of squiggly line that you see here in your sketch options. So click on that spline tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the stem of the shamrock and I am going to start splining, okay? And as I spline, I'm continuously plotting points all the way around. Now we'll have to stop at certain points because the spline tool will want to, uh, you know, turn at a certain radius and so on. So we need to be mindful of that. But I'm going to start down here, okay, roughly speaking, and you see my tool coming in there, and every so often I'm just clicking a point, and you can see I'm, I'm matching the geometry there, like so, 
Now, if I zoom in, you can see there, okay, that as I get to this point, it's very difficult to turn, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just zoom back out, and I will now press, at this point, press escape. Okay, so I have this line here now drawn in, okay? And you'll notice on your spline, when you click on the line, when you have it drawn, we have our, uh, these little arrows here that help us to change the direction of the spline, the length of it, the, and so on. So you can adjust those after, you can move points forward and back as well, your spline points, you can move them forward or back or whatever you want, and uh, we can adjust our spline. So once we've the spline done, we can actually still adjust it. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to click on the spline tool again, okay, still in the same sketch, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start splining from that point there, and I'm going to work my way around. And the more curvy the... Uh, the shape you're dealing with you're going to notice that you're going to want more spline points at uh, shorter intervals so for example a long interval would be stretched out like that a short one would be just a little bit and that will allow more accuracy on the uh, for the purpose of tracing a shape okay so I'm going to continue on there now and once I get to that point there I'm going to press escape again and then I'm going to press spline tool again and select the point from the previous spline and continue on. And as I move on, you'll see I am tracing the shape and I'm using the wheel on my mouse to zoom out and in. I like to be quite close to the, uh, the image that I'm tracing just for accuracy purposes. Not that you have to be overly accurate unless there was a need to be um, and so on and keep going. Now you'll notice in here that this little bit of a turn here is a little bit, we have a little bit more room. So what I do here is I shorten up the, sh the spline points and I'm actually putting in a series of them there to get me around that turn and then off I go again. And again following the shape, I'll wheel out with my mouse, I'll spline back around on this particular part of the shamrock over and right into the point here now I'm not going to be able to turn that around I don't have enough space in terms of the image so I'll press escape there again I'll then select my spline tool and what I'll do is I'll go back to that point I had the last time and I'll begin again okay just make sure when you're restarting your spline that you're starting on the exact point where you finished the previous one so that there's a relationship there because when we go to extrude this we need to be have a closed sketch, meaning that all the parts join up, that there's no gaps. Because when we go to extrude, i.e. to make a 3D, if there are gaps, that can be problematic. Because it mightn't give us the 3D shape that we're looking for. So I'm splining around here. Continuing the spline on down. Quite a straight stretch here, really. And uh, continue on down, like so. And as you see here, as I am, um, and I'll zoom in on this, as I'm getting into that space there, there's actually space to turn, like on the opposite one there that I had a few moments ago, and I shorten up the splines here, okay? And it doesn't matter if they're that accurate, but you'll have a series of them there to get you around that turn. Now I'll continue on again, like so. And I'll work around the clover again, profiling that shape. And this is a very, very handy uh, tool to be using in SOLIDWORKS, especially when you're coming to the design and logos and so on. It um, really allows you to, um, to create uh, geometry that represents uh, logos that are out there. Now I'm going to escape again here, okay? You see the way that one there kind of dipped off a little bit? I'm going to click on that line there and drag it just a little bit there before I start the next spline. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll go back to the spline tool again, click it on, go back to the point there. See when you hover over the point, it highlights, click on it and begin your next spline and um, keep splining the tool around um, like so. Again, making sure that we're doing it at the kind of the right intervals. Again, this is kind of rather intuitive. You'll kind of see it as you go along, okay? Um, 
when you're using the tool how it bounces in and out off the line and I just zoom over here keep going I'm coming into another kind of a point here now now with this point I could uh, make a point of trying to turn that through a series of very short splines and I'll give you an example of that unlike the other ones where I restarted them I'll do a very short turnaround here okay and that's with a series of splines there you can see that so what I'll do now you see I've turned that very corner point and um, but it tends to be a little more awkward but I want to show you that anyway to show you that it can be done too okay because there are points when you're doing logos and stuff like that or image mapping that you will uh, need to do so okay and uh, we can work that on I'm not happy with how far that is out but I'll show you how we can adjust that in a few moments um, and I'll continue my spline on down to the ground like so okay and I'll get down here and you see a kind of a, a dotted line appearing here showing that actually I want that end point of this spline to line up with the beginning point of my first spline and I'll press escape now I'll go back up here I was a little bit out off the profile there so what I can do there is I can just pull that in a little bit by clicking on the spline points and realigning it okay so if you've gone off a little bit don't worry about it all right you can always pull them back in and uh, this should be fine now on the bottom there I'm going to join the two points just with a straight line okay like so escape now I have a sketch there now and I am going to go to features okay and it's through the bus space and you can see now that I am going to be able to uh, extrude out my shamrock okay and if St. Patrick was here he'd be very very happy with this little SOLIDWORKS lesson so I'm going to bring it on out to maybe like something like maybe 50 millimeters and then check the box there uh, for extruded bus space there check the box up here and there we go now you can see the image disappears because the image is part of the sketch we're gone out of the sketch and if I click and control it and look at it from the front I have now created my um, shamrock to add effect to that we can click on the front surface and we can do a, a go up to our features tab click on fill it and we can put a small radius maybe we'll try two millimeters just to soften the edges to see if that'll work and it says feature expert cannot create valid fillet chamfer because this fillet entered chamfer face itself intersecting and that is the reason for that is is because of these very sharp turning points within the object itself so i could if i wanted to go back to something like 0.5 of a millimeter okay and click that and you'll see actually i do get a very slight fillet in there now with that in mind if i wanted to edit that fillet maybe bring it up to one mil go over to your design tree right click on your fillet and then you'll have the option here to edit feature it's that finger pointing towards the yellow box with the green bit sticking out of it click on that and if i i can now adjust that measurement to one millimeter and see if that works and it does okay so i now have a nice fill it on that um there are many things i can do here for example if i wanted to uh you know uh, render and so on and that's what we'll do we're going to keep this simple we have a nice shape here what i'm going to do on my design tree over here on the left i'm going to hold my control button select fill it select boss extrude so we have the whole lot selected and i'm going to go over here to my appearances i'm not going to give this a material i don't think you'll find clover in your materials list so we we'll leave it as what we call the grey matter, the SOLIDWORKS grey matter. Um, we we'll go to appearances here and then we we'll go to plastics. Okay. And we we'll go to high gloss and we we'll look for something green. So green, high gloss, plastic. And then we we'll press save. Okay. So I'll save that there as shamrock. And save. Now, so I have my shamrock there very very nice and um, what I can do there now is I can go to my uh, view settings up here um, I'll click on the actual view it's in perspective ambient occlusion on shadows real view graphics all of that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to render an image now so I have the photo view 360 there if you don't have that go to SOLIDWORKS add-ins or go to tools down to 
the bottom there where it says add-ins apologies there that's there and you can check the box there for uh, photo view 360 and press ok and that'll add it in so i talked about uh, photo view settings the last day options um, just to look at the size of the image you'll get out to get a look at the quality of the render just change the preview to better and the final render quality to better uh, you can do best or maximum but they will be very slow normally on the machines that we use so just check the little tick there and what we'll do is we'll go back to photo view 360 and we'll hit the final render button okay now it's saying okay uh, for a more realistic rendering we recommend you switch perspective so um i'll do that there in a moment so if i the render window is going to pop open here now in a second um so what i'll do is once that opens i'll abort that render and i'll go back in and change that setting so i'll just x that off it says are you sure you want to abort yes okay so i'll check that off i'll go back here perspective turn it on okay and you can see perspective makes it look a little more real life and it's nice to have it like that i think it's a very nice feature to have okay so i'll just save there while i'm at it uh, before i actually go into the uh photo view again i'm going to go to the beach ball here over in my design tree my display manager that's what that's officially called and i'm going to go to the scene there where you see the camera the checkered floor and the light and what i'm going to do is these directional lights i'm going to um make sure that they're they're turned on in photo view 360 right click on in photo view 360 and here as well because we want light on this in photo view 360 so that the surface is not too dark and we can right click on any one of those and we can edit the direction of those lights so edit all lights and you'll see now um our lights uh, appearing and i can drag them in whatever way i want the shadow kind of falling out more towards that way okay and um we'll try and hover over it can be awkward with some of the points um i will just try and drag that one like so and trying to get them in a position where we can have them as a more kind of a there we go i'm happy with that it looks good and bright on the surface there which is what we want and we have a nice shadow coming out the back which is lovely and what i can do there now just before i go to photo view 360 go to display style and just click off the line so we can have a nice soft view of it press save just make sure your perspective is on go to photo view 360 go to final render and then what we can do is we can uh, create the rendered image of what we're looking to do so you will see here now i get the actual rendering process you can see it's quite quick because i have it set at not the highest level of course i can change backgrounds as well um you know i could have put in a scene in the background maybe of a street in dublin or something if i wanted to we're going to keep this simple for this tutorial here today and that is my image there of my shamrock and you can see nice decent quality okay very nice feature there and what i can do is i can save that image and i could go to desktop and i could save it as uh, my shamrock and i'll save that 